everyone and welcome back to my channel. Yes, you're still at my channel, CC's Creations. There is no more white mat. <laughs> it's gone. I have redesigned my studio. It's There's some of it still in process, but uh, more on that later. Today I am doing a watercolor for a special someone and I am using a new tape. <laughs> if you have been following me, you know that I absolutely despise <laughs> this green tape. And so I found the only tape that I found that it was neutral color was this drafting tape. I'm not sure how well it's going to hold up to watercolor, but I'm going to try it. And I don't measure. <laughs> I like the fact that I can see the paper underneath, which makes it really easy to see that I'm going straight or not. I've cut down my paper to 5x7 in case you're curious. This person's favorite color is red that I've been told in the past and I think I'm going to be using my Prima watercolor set, the tropicals, because the colors kind of go well together. So I'm going to start with a very light color to the background. I'm thinking a little bit of blue. It's kind of like a dark color, so I'm just going to mute that down a little bit. You can't see that. <laughs> here. Ah, here we go. I'm just going to splash water and it's my brush is dirty as you can see. Uh, there's that bit of blue that I have mixed in already on my brush. And so that's perfectly fine. Oh, you know what though? I forgot to seal the corners here. So I'm gonna do that. Cause I have no idea how this tape is going to hold up. Uh, so I better make sure that it is down. All right. And I'm gonna grab some more of that blue and just flicking it. Um, maybe add more water. I'm leaving some areas without any color uh, just because I want to add that red, that pop of red in there. So what I'm doing right now is I'm mixing a little bit of that number 24, whatever that is, it seems to be kind of like a sepia brownish tone. And I'm just going to color the bottom with this and hoping that it's going to migrate to the top like this. I'm keeping it very simple. I want this super organic. And so far I'm liking this. I love the brown that's being mixed in there. Might even splash or even here. And I'm going to mix in a tiny bit of green to that mix. Ooh, I like that. It's kind of interesting. And I'm not going to wait for it to dry. I'm going to go right in with the red. Now, this is where I never know what to do. <laughs> um, I'm aiming for florals. I'm not sure that this person is into florals. I, I don't know her all that well. I just know that red is her color. But um, I'm kind of hoping that red flowers are okay. <laughs> and then maybe a little pop of red here and there. Yeah, whoops, I dipped my brush in the wrong water. I did not want that to happen. So I'm just gonna clean up here a little bit. I'm just using uh, Kleenex, or tissue, well, Kleenex, yes. <laughs> I like this, I'm going to leave that in. I never do. Uh, when I do the, the, this kind of painting, I try to avoid the hard, the harsh edges, but um, I like this one. And I'm just going to light that up a little bit with some yellow. 
and I'm just mixing that in with whatever I have on my palette here so it's not going to be like a super bright yellow. The blue kind of disappeared, so I need to bring in a little bit of that blue somewhere. So this has been dry for a day, and I love the variegated background that I got. I just uh, it's so light and luminous and airy. I have a water bottle. I'm just going to spray just in these um, spots. And I was going to dip my brush in my tea. <laughs> so I'm going to grab again a little bit more of that red. And what I'm going to do is keep dipping or keep applying the color. It's gonna want to go wherever it needs to go. It will follow the water, basically. While this is dry, I'm gonna show you the brush that I'm using for this. I'm using my size zero round brush by Raphael. Uh, it is also called Le 803 Petit Gris. What I'm going to do is kind of like pick up a little bit of the excess. So I'm using a paper towel and I keep drying my brush on it a little bit just to make my brush thirsty. I'm going to try and keep these two flowers distinct. I just want to limit some of these puddles because sometimes it can get you in trouble. Uh, and also what I want to do is have this one here, actually I should have, you know what, I'm just going to flick some of that color. Um, I feel that the flowers are too high up, so I'm going to add a little bit of red here down at the bottom, just to bring that flower a little bit more towards that end. I'm very tempted to grab some of this color here. But I know that it's kind of defeating the purpose of having a true red. So just to introduce a little bit of interest, I guess. Yeah, I really soaked this. <laughs> I'm grabbing here, I'm grabbing this color which is number 16 unfortunately there's no name to these colors but I'm grabbing uh, 16 and I have a little bit of that yellowish color here so I'm just mixing the two of them and then I'm gonna bring some of that blue so I'm using essentially I'm using the colors that I had in my palette um, let's see here might just drop a little bit of just praying it a little bit now this already I can tell is not green enough for me and a little bit too spotty so I'm gonna go for the straight up green yeah that's much better and I can also draw a little bit of green around those flowers the colors will mingle uh, because you know it's still wet but um, I don't mind this it's going to create something quite interesting I'm sure okay. and again you know I want to keep this simple uh, it's a small painting the size is very small so I really do want to keep that a little bit more simple 
I'm just going to soak up some of that excess color right here. That's good. And maybe I can intensify a tiny bit of that blue. Uh, let's grab this number 23. Just a little bit here and there. Now this blue is going to probably walk into the red at some point. It's all good. Okay. All right, I'm back. Um, I just want you to see how nice and flat this dries when it's left on the, um, that's just the thing moving, uh, when it's left to dry, to air dry, and also when it's taped down to a board, it's, there's no warping at all. Okay. So I want to re-emphasize that flower. I love these two. I love how the colors have dried and how organic the blooming is, especially on this one. This one I want kind of like bigger. So I'm going to spritz quite a bit in that area. And of course I missed. <laughs> um, Oops. Uh, okay, I have a big puddle here, but that's okay. Let's just go with it. So, let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to take again that same red. I think this is quinacridone red. If I had to put a name to this color. And I'm going to take a little bit of that also. Let's see where that's going to get me. Uh, this obviously has gone crazy here. So let me just pick that up. All right. I know that the color is going to keep on moving because there's a lot, a lot of water in here. Okay, let me do something here. I'm going to pick up a lot of pigment on my brush. And I'm going to keep loading it with color like loading the center is what I'm saying as I've done earlier I'm going to mix a little bit of that orange in there like this puddle though might be too much I'm just gonna pick some of that um, I might reload with a little bit of yellow I may have put a little bit too much. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, there's quite a bit of water here, so I'm going to eliminate some of it. Because if there's too much water, well, A, it's going to take a long time to dry. And the color is just going to pool into one single area. I'm trying to encourage it to move towards the bottom here. I'm going to mix a little bit of that red with the emerald green that's in this palette here to make kind of like a dark like a reddish purplish gray and I'm going to use that to delimit some of the petals. I do have here, I found on Pinterest this uh, beautiful turn, okay, <laughs> this beautiful peony because I, for some reason I'm reminded of peonies and I, I don't want to do this because that's <laughs> too time consuming and yeah that's a different approach but 
I can use it for inspiration, it's sort of like a guide as to where I should add some shades and you know, like just the general idea. So I'm going to grab this red. Put some of that in here. And that green. That green in itself is not my favorite green. It's, I don't know, it's a green I don't usually go for. But I'm going to start dropping a little bit of uh, green in there. Not too much. I'm hoping you can see what happens. So it just darkens up the red, makes it a little bit purple. So there must be uh, quite a bit of blue in there. Uh, I'm gonna keep adding a little bit more green. This is super purple to me. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. So I'm hoping you can see this. So I'm just adding a little bit of that green a bit at the time because if I add too much and I don't like it I have to redo the whole thing there we go see how it's turned into this gray but I can still see a little bit of red through this there's a hint of red undertone okay so let's go in I'm not you know I again I don't want to overthink anything either but I'm just going to to darken some petals and I have no idea what I'm doing right now so just um, watch me fumble <laughs> uh, I kind of want to have the, those um, uh, what you call them not deckled edge, but um, uh, you know when you cut something with a pair of scissors and you just like go on the side of the paper like this? I know there's a term for it. I'll find it <laughs> eventually. This is a lot more delicate than what I had anticipated, but you know what? It's fun. It's fun to push yourself sometimes. And I have no idea what kind of flowers I'm making. I, it's probably not peony worthy. <laughs> but it's okay. I'm having fun and I hope that the person that will get this um i'm sure she'll appreciate it so i am not stressing i'm just having fun right now Yeah, there's a problem here because I'm I'm walking into a section that's already wet, so I need to move to another flower. Let's do this one here. Um, keep this one simple. It's a very fine tip brush.
and I know <laughs> I know it's natural fibers because <laughs> Uh, it doesn't spring. There is no spring back action on this whatsoever. None. This point I'm going to introduce some kind of stem. I'm going to take number 16 and I will add this to the mix. I will add a bit of this, sorry, I will add a bit of that to this. Oops, can't see. Just because I want to keep it in the same family. Yeah. Okay. Oops, I got it too close. I really hope that this person likes florals though, that I'm not even sure. <laughs> uh, I should have checked before, but it's kind of like a surprise, um, a surprise thing. I don't like that, that larger blooming, I really don't like that. So here. Let's stop this and I'm going to rework that later. Take two of adding stems. So before when I added the stems, I didn't like the way they looked because I kind of like tried to make them fatter than they should be. So I'm going to start very slowly. And I'm using just the tip of my brush. It seems to help. And if I have to make them bigger, I will later on. For now, I don't want to tamper with them too much. And I'm going to add a few splashes of that green, kind of like around the flowers. And then using the tip of my brush, I'm just going to add, you know, a few brush strokes, I guess. And this will give me some kind of um, leaf-ish. Um, yeah, like very <laughs> little leaves. <laughs> okay, words are not coming out, but I think you know what I mean. I find that when I do this, it's it's more natural to me than, you know, trying to form leaves the way they should be in nature. Oh, I really like the, the way the, 
that mixture that I prepared for the uh, the uh, flowers is mixing well with with the green that I have. I feel like I should add a little bit of that green down here. Um, and maybe they'll just be dots or not, I don't know. I'm really just playing with the textures here. <laughs> Let's see here, if I add a little bit more of that blue. Ooh, well that's nice. That's like a blue-black. I really like this color. I'm hoping that this comes on camera really well. So I'm, this could be dangerous, but, and it's not working. <laughs> so let's just add a little bit of, I really wanted to, there we go. See, this is what I wanted to do. All right. Um, I've done this before. This is not new, but it's kind of like, whoa, that's too much. It's kind of like a, a strong flicking motion. Right now it's looking very confusing because of all the colors that uh, the dots that got spread onto the tape. But it's not, it's, it's exactly what I wanted. So... And in fact, on this one here, I think it came out in the wrong spot. So let's just see if I can add one more. So it's essentially, I'm just like, there we go. That's exactly what I wanted. So yeah, I want those dots to come out here instead of the other way. And let's add a little bit more here. There we go. So I think now this has helped bring the flowers back into the foreground. And I'm not going to temper with that anymore. I think, I don't know, I like it. Maybe add a little bit of brown to the stem, maybe? Uh, just to make a kind of like a shadowy effect. Although I could have used that same uh, dark mixture that I got there. There we go. I'm not going to add more than that. I like it the way it looks. I can't wait to see what it's going to look like when it dries, but definitely these dots in a row. I don't know. I, I haven't figured out how to give a name to this flicking motion. Vigorous flicking motion. <laughs> down below if you have a good name for it but you know what I mean right like a heart flick it's like a almost like you know you're slashing across the page but you're not I want to darken some of those um, the leaves with just a little bit hold on I'm just gonna grab the same green again I'm going to add that to the mix that I had and I'm gonna take a dark green here, that's the green I want. And maybe pick up a little bit more of that. Yes. So I'm just going to add that right at the beginning of those leaves. Just to create a shadow because, I mean, technically the leaves that have formed underneath the flowers, there should be some kind of a shadow. I thought I was finished, but I decided to add a little bit of yellow um, to the sky, 
just to brighten things up because it, it kind of is like not boring but it needs a little bit of you know <laughs> I'm not gonna add too too much that's a lot <laughs> I need to tone that down a little bit Just a little bit here, a little bit there. I'm kind of like filling in the holes. But I don't want to hide all the white that I have. So just just a little bit, a very tiny bit to lighten things up a little bit. And that's that. I think I can remove the tape. That, that's the part where I always get stuck is, you know, refining, right? Because it's so much fun. Um, I know that I've probably created some water lines, but I think it will be okay. I'm tilting my head to see where the wet spots are, and I'm just extending it to the next... Um, the next color so that it's not so visible when it dries uh, yeah, I think it'll be okay all right uh, okay can I remove the tape yeah I can all right I just I'm gonna have to be careful so that I don't walk into the that wet paint. Okay, so this was a new tape that I'm trying. It's the drafting tape and it looks like it worked. Oh yeah! And it pulls off a lot easier than the other tape that I had. I have a little bit of bleed through here. But that's probably because I didn't uh, press down hard enough on the tape. Oh, this is nice. It really pulls off nicely. All right. I'm quite happy. Uh-oh. I'm pulling out the paper. That's not good. That's bad news. That is not good. Hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, but I have pulled some of the paper and now I don't know what to do. See here? It pulled up the paper. My! Oh, that's so unfortunate. No. <laughs> so the person who gets it will have to frame it close to the picture, which I was trying to avoid. I'm gonna have to pull on it. Uh -oh. Oh, it depends on how you look at it, which angle you're looking at it. I mean, if you're looking at it from, you know, a different angle, it doesn't show as much, but oh, now I'm so sad because <laughs> this was a gift. Well, it is a gift. I'm still going to give it to her, but um, anyways, I like it. It's cute, simple. And I just need to stamp my signature. It's a little big though. I really do need um, to have another signature done because that's quite big. It's gonna hide the whole picture. Let me just sign my name with the brush. she's gonna like it I think it's cute I like it I think it's pretty I like small um, paintings 
I think they're fun. They're a lot of fun to make anyways. And I do think that that little bit of yellow here and there, although it's very muted, helps uh, bring a little bit of sunshine into the painting. So I hope that you've enjoyed this and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Also, if you'd like to see more of these videos, make sure that you hit the thumbs up. It helps uh, tremendously and subscribe if you haven't already and make sure that you click that little bell to get notifications of any new content. I publish here every Tuesdays and Thursdays and I will see you later. Bye!